This exactly 10 weeks after his sudden death, Michael Jackson has finally been laid to rest. About 200 family members and close friends attended the private service at a cemetery that was filled with Hollywood legends as well. Ben Tracy is in Los Angeles with more. Good morning, Ben. Good morning, Maggie. You know, last night's event was star-studded. It included some very moving moments, such as when Michael Jackson's children placed a crown on the King of Pop's casket. But the event did not exactly start according to plan. The Jackson family arrived in style in a fleet of Rolls Royces, but were more than fashionably late, keeping 77-year-old Liz Taylor, Macaulay Culkin, and Barry Bonds waiting in 90-degree heat for more than an hour. When Michael Jackson's children and his body finally arrived, the Jacksons turned off the live feed to keep the service private. We do know that singer Gladys Knight performed. Unlike Jackson's memorial spectacle, police kept fans and the media far away from the burial. Jackson's mother, Catherine, reportedly chose Forest Lawn Cemetery so her son could finally rest in peace. Uh, you're not going to be able to go and, and, and put flowers uh, in front of Michael Jackson's grave as you can Marilyn Monroe's, for instance. That's because Jackson was interred inside the Great Mausoleum, which is not open to the public. His golden bronze coffin cost $25,000, and the security cost for the service could reach $150,000. Michael Jackson's estate is footing the bill. Now, Michael Jackson's first wife, Lisa Marie Presley, was at the service last night and apparently was quite overcome with emotion when Jackson's casket arrived. And we're also told that when the family entered the mausoleum at the end of the service that Catherine Jackson, Michael's mother, was so overcome, she actually had to turn around. Maggie. Ben Tracy in Los Angeles. Thank you, Ben. Tom Mesereau was Michael Jackson's friend as well as his former attorney, and he was at the service last night. Good morning, Tom. Morning, Maggie. Thank you for taking the time so early this morning. Since we couldn't be there, will you take us inside the memorial last night? What is a moment that particularly stands out for you? You know, there are many moments. It, it was a ceremony that incorporated so many wonderful aspects of Michael Jackson. Uh, it was happy, it was sad, it was heavy, it was soft and light. Uh, there was a lot of magic in the air. Uh, everyone sitting there, uh, you know, just just soaked in just the beauty and the magic and just the happy aspects of this very unique person. But I think when the three children carried the crown to the casket, uh, it was a, just a wonderfully moving moment uh, that I will never forget. Looking at, at video as we are right now, we, we see some celebrity friends who we didn't see attend the first memorial. We saw Elizabeth Taylor was there, Macaulay Culkin was there. How would you describe the mood there yesterday versus the public memorial? Well, I, I think both, uh, both occasions uh, had a lot to do with who the person Michael is. Michael had a universal quality where he reached out to mankind to try and heal the world, world through art, through music, through love, through kindness. And there was the individual who would just, uh, you know, if he helped a child from the inner city with some ice cream or uh, introduced him to one of his animals at Neverland, it would put a smile on his face. This was a very, very special and unique person. And I think both services brought out a lot about who Michael really was. What about Michael Jackson's mother? What about Catherine, who was noticeably weak and reportedly couldn't even go inside the mausoleum? Has her son's death taken a physical toll on her? Or would you say it was just the overwhelming emotion of the day? You know, I, I did walk into the mausoleum and see Catherine turning around because she looked rather weak, rather faint. Um, you know, she's a wonderful person, a special lady, uh, very strong, very kind, very spiritual. And uh, I think everything uh, just got too much at one point. Yeah. We haven't spoken with you uh, since the toxicology report came out. Michael Jackson's death has now been ruled a homicide. His death certificate lists injection by another as the cause of his death. Do you think we will or should see criminal charges here? I think the evidence has to be carefully analyzed. You know, there's been a lot of uh, you know, innuendo uh, in the media, but I haven't seen the actual evidence. But certainly if, if any doctor overprescribed medication to him to either keep him under their control, to enable him, to manipulate him, or for whatever reason, uh, it's got to be carefully looked at and, if necessary, prosecuted. Tom Mesro, thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you for inviting me. Okay.